My name is Dick Van Dyke, and this is I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret. Brought to you tonight by Tony Products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Now from Hollywood, California, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. Again, this week, we are happy to be originating from Hollywood, California, and so I would like you to meet our cast of thousands. First, the girl of a thousand charms, Betsy Palmer. Sitting in for Bill Cullen, here is a man of at least a thousand jokes, Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> and sitting in for Bess Meyerson is a girl of a thousand songs, Miss Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> and finally, a man who is one in a thousand, which is kind of sad because only last week he was one in a million. <laughs> Yes. All right, may we have our first contestant, please? Will you come in, sir? <laughs> yes, good evening. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Lutz Rui. I'm from California. Mr. Rui. Now, Mr. Rui, if you whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Step over here and let me whisper to you. <laughs> All right, now, panel, to help you classify this secret, the clue concerns something Mr. Rui has, and we'll start the game with Betsy Palmer, please. Mr. Rui, do you have this in your box? Yes. And Gary has another one in his box? Yes. No. You have something better than Mr. Rui in your box? Well, we won't compare them, but it's something different than something what he's different. got. Something different. Is it a lie? Yes. Is it four legs? Is it what? Is it four legged? Yes. Twenty dollars down, sixty dollars to go, and we go please to Murray Amsterdam. Four legged. Well, it couldn't be your wife. <laughs> four legged, and uh, oh, I have a just just as a, as a quick guess. Maybe it's like one of those things that uh, President Kennedy got for his child, a four legged horse. I mean, one of those little ones. One of those little right. ones. You had to come tonight. Uh, yeah, that's right. He's Is that got right? A, he's got a horse in the table. Oh, yes, now, you'll see him for a moment, but that's only half the secret. Oh. I mean, you, you know what? You're going to get a jockey small enough to ride him. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right, $40 down, $40 to go. We go to Rosie Clooney, please. And Maury has, has uh, answered half of it, right? He has answered what's in this I see. box or table. And uh, we don't know what's in yours? That's right. I see. Is it an animal, too? It also is an animal. Uh, four-legged? Four-legged? <laughs> Last time I looked. Not, <laughs> not, not a horse. Not a horse. Um, a monkey. Is it a monkey, Mr. Ruiz? No. It no. isn't. No. Well, does it have some connection with Mr. Ruiz's animal? No. <laughs> Oh, it would be a wild outcome if it did. <laughs> Sixty dollars down, twenty dollars to go. There is a, a, a vague relationship between the two, but not speaking generically. All right, we go to Henry Morgan. Please. Is it an elephant? <laughs> nope. Is it uh, bigger than a bread box size horse? <laughs> is it an animal that you usually wouldn't think of as being small enough to be in there? Yes. Uh, is it a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> No, it is uh, it's the kind of program it could be. How about it, a cow? A cow? No, I don't care for that. <laughs> it's a cow. Now, <laughs> uh, first, Mr. Rui, let's see this magnificent pygmy horse. Now, remember, this is not a pony. This is a full-grown horse. Oh. 
Now, this is this is Folger. How old is this horse? Six years old, Jerry. Six years old. And uh, where do they come from? Uh, this comes from Munich, Germany, where the zoo director bred these horses to this size for the last 40 years. Uh-huh. But you have five of them out of jungle land. Right, we have them in the baby today. I forgot to uh, mention the fact that Mr. Rui and his brother run a place called Jungle Land, a fascinating place out of a thousand oaks, and they have many unusual animals as well as some usual ones like lions, tigers, and things. Now, what? how can you tell if this isn't a pony? Well, uh, the gait is completely different. This is the gait of an Arabian horse, where the gait of, of a pony is different. Uh -huh. It's more trotting. And uh, the head is different. The form of the head is a long one in a horse, while it is broader in a pony. I see. But if you see them running together, you can distinctively say this is a horse. It's even Arabian. The father once was Arabian horse. Mm. All right. Now, if you will take him off stage, I'll get this box out of the way, and we'll try to find out what is in the... Try to find out what's in the next box. Here we go, fellas. Catch. Turn this around. And here we have... Now, different than the horse, which is a true, which is a true breed, this is this, this is a a a Herford. A Herford. It's a muted Herford. It's stunted and it is 18 months old. So, in other words, th this is like this is like a midget in the in the human family. Uh, these uh, these cannot be bred. Boy, she's fat, isn't she? Well, it's completely well, true in proportion, really. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely I, true. I, yes. I know the reason for all these small animals. You know, they say the world is getting smaller. This is to make it look bigger. <laughs> also, in case you want condensed milk. <laughs> all right, now, the best, at least in my opinion, the best is yet to come. Go along, Bessie. There you go. There you go. Wait until you see... Let me get this out of the way. Wait until you see what else tiny... He has. Oh. <laughs> cute. Now, these goats are how old? Four days. They are four days old. But when they are full grown, they will be no higher than 18 inches. And this, again, is a true breed. Oh. It lives where, sir? In West Africa, in the Cameroons. They are tree dwellers. How they. They, they come from the Cameroons, and when full grown... <laughs> look, they're curious. They're going out to look at the audience. And look how they flick their little tail. When, when you go yeah, to the... Um, they look like they were made up by Walt Disney. Don't they? <laughs> now, when you go to the Cameroons, you'll find the, the adult of this species high up in the trees. Living in the trees. They can climb trees and they climb them to, uh, to uh, uh, eat off the leaves. Now, let me see if I can stretch them around a little bit. All right, fellas. Come on, Joe. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Uh, oh, there's a cute little baby. There you go. All right, uh, Mr. Rui, if you can capture these wild beasts for us, I'll go down this way. <laughs> that one has feathers. Oh, and it's just been a charming display. Thank you so much yeah. and good luck to Jungle Land. <laughs> back with you again in just a minute, but first let's watch. Hey, we're back, friends, and before we can proceed, I'm going to have to ask each of you, please, to hand me your pad and pencil, because you must not have them for this next spot. We always have pads and pencils for the panelists so that they can make a note of the name of the contestant and any pertinent facts that are brought out during the questioning. At this time, no pads, no pencils. All right. Having uh, collected the pads and pencils, I would like to introduce our special guest... <laughs> And a very good friend of mine, I'm proud to say. He is the star of his own show, of course, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and he's soon going to be seen in the movie Bye Bye Birdie. Here, then, is Mr. Dick Van Dyke. I'm the biggest thing on this show. <laughs> yes, you are. Let me say, first of all, how I'm sorry to hear about your ratings. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, that show of theirs is flying now. What is it? Uh, about six, something like that? Seven, eight, somewhere in there. Somewhere in oh, Boy, that show is really off the ground and flying. It's a marvelous cast you got, too, including my good friend Mario over there. Oh, that's right. Hi. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> well, family, in case you're wondering why I took away your pads and pencils, it's because we have a little memory quiz to try on you. Now, we've done this once or twice before with some interesting results. I'm going to ask Dick a series of biographical questions, and we want you to listen to his answers very carefully, because when I finish the interview, I'm going to test you to find out how many facts you can remember. Is that okay? No. <laughs> it's not okay, Betsy? You just assume we forgot the whole thing? Don't well, listen, the memory of an uh, Dick, what is your full name? Uh, my full name is Richard Wayne Van Dyke. And where were you born, Richard Wayne? I was born in uh, West Plains, Missouri, but at the age of two months, I left there and, and went to Danville, Illinois. Uh -huh. And my parents came with me. That's nice. <laughs> now, I know that you opened an advertising agency in Danville, and what was the name of it? Uh, it was called the uh, Wayne G. Williams Advertising Agency. Uh-huh. And uh, what were your, some of your accounts? Oh, we had the, uh, the Second National Bank was one of our <laughs> accounts, <laughs> and, and uh, one of our creditors also. Yes. And then we had a little place called the... Uh, Millard Jewelry Company. I did an old man on the street interview show. Oh, yeah. Well, now, was this a successful business venture? Oh, yeah. It'll right up until we went bankrupt about six months later. <laughs> <laughs> so, having gone bankrupt, what did you do then? I formed a, a, a nightclub act with another uh, gentleman from my hometown named Phil Erickson, and we called ourselves the, the uh, Merry Mute because it was an all pantomime act. I see. Well, how did you, how did you make out? Well, we uh, came out to California, and uh, we were hired by uh, Slapsy Maxie's, the big nightclub out here. Yes. And uh, we did the dinner show, and were fired before the uh, supper show. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's, a, that's pretty fast going. Do you remember the first joke you ever told? Yeah, of course, the Panama Mac. I didn't tell one for a good many years, but I remember the first joke I ever told in front of an audience. Oh, where was that? It was at the Georgian Hotel in Santa Monica. Now, what was the joke? You really... <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll have to find out. Yeah, well, what was the joke? Did you hear about the owl who married a goat? No, what happened with the owl that married a goat? They had a hoot nanny. <laughs> shortly after that, we left Los Angeles yeah, and went where? Very shortly after that. Down to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -huh. Lived there a good long while. And then from Atlanta, where? Well, I went back uh, to Illinois mm -hmm. then for a while. As a matter of fact, I served for a little while as a barker with the Sally Rand Show, and I played the Illinois State Fair at Springfield. Oh. Uh, when were you married to your lovely bride? Uh, February the 12th, 1948. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the... Uh, in a church? Uh, no, on a program called Bride and Groom. Do you remember that show? You're kidding. You yeah. weren't married on that show. Yeah, it was the only way I could afford to get married at the time. <laughs> they bought the ring and everything. Well, what, what did they give you as gifts? Oh, let's see. They gave us uh, some bookcases yeah. to go around the room and... Uh, Electric iron, I remember, and uh, what else did they give us? A set of silverware, uh -huh. sterling silverware, and they flew us to Mount Hood, Oregon, to Timberline Lodge for our, for our honeymoon. Oh, marvelous. How many uh, children do you now have? I have four now, Gary. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian, he's 13. I have... <laughs> they're looking at me over there. Barry, he's 11. Stacy is 8, and Carrie Beth is 17 months. Well, finally, now, one last question on your own show, The Dick Van Dyke Show. What is the address, address of your mythical home? Oh, uh, it's 448 Bonnie Meadow Road, New Rochelle, New York. All right. Now, panel, you have in front of you, you each have in front of you a little sign that says out. I will ask you one question at a time. As soon as you fail, put up your out sign. Uh, <laughs> not so soon, Betsy. You'll find a little mark in front of you where to put your out sign. Have children with normal names. <laughs> well, Betsy, we'll start with you, dear. Oh, dear. Where was Dick born and raised? Well, he was born in one place, but he was raised in another place. <laughs> I know that. He was born in Missouri, and he was raised in Danville, Illinois. What was the name of the town he was born in? Ooh. <laughs> Westbury or Westminster or <laughs> West something or other. We'll let you stay in. It was West Plains. That was good, close good. enough. And uh, let's, Mara, you ought to know all about uh, this fellow. Are you kidding? I've been with this guy two years. I don't even know his wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is his real name? Uh, well, we got a Wayne there in the middle there. Richard Wayne Van Dyke. <laughs> Richard Wayne Van Dyke. And Rosie, what was the name of his nightclub act? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, Pantomime act. It was the Merry Mute. 
Very good. Right? Very good. Uh, Henry, what was the name of Dick's advertising agency? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Wayne G. Uh, Williams. That's, that's very good. <laughs> that's amazing. Isn't it? Betsy, name one account that Dick handled at his advertising agency. Uh, you, you handled a, um, a bank. What was the name of the bank? Uh, <laughs> the Georgia. <laughs> There's a mark in front of you, honey. Where to put it so he doesn't hide doesn't hide your face. All right. All right. All right. Now let's go to uh, Mari Amsterdam and name the other account that Dick handled at his advertising. Yeah, the second National Bank. Yes. And what was what was the other account? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out? out. All right, uh, 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 panel, uh, put the outs down on the bottom part of your desk so you don't hide your face. That's, that's the idea. All right, now we go to Rosie Clooney. Rosie, I saw you working particularly hard on this one. What is Dick's address on the Dick Van Dyke show? I worked so hard on it, I don't know it. Um, I, I know everything except the number. Bonnie, uh, Bonnie... Bonnie Meadow Drive, uh, on, New I'm Rochelle. I'll, I'll yeah. sing it in a moment. <laughs> the only way I'm going to get out of this. Bonnie thing. Meadow Lane, just for kicks, even though Mari is out. Mari, what is the, the number of the house? 448. No? <laughs> <laughs> it must be 32. That's our funniest number. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy was right. It's 448. You don't know the address of the house yourself. I'm out too, huh? Uh, yes, dear. I'm, I'm afraid so. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. And now we go to Henry. Run, when was Henry? Dick married, Henry? Pardon? When was Dick married? February 12, 1948. Very good. You're the winner. Gee, uh, thanks very much for being with us, Dick. Oh, thanks for and having me, Gary. Coming in particularly at the last minute, which I'll tell the folks about a little later. Thanks so much. Dick Van Dyke, friends. <laughs> All right, and now may we have our last contestant, please. Will you come out, sir? <laughs> we just lost him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Son, can you get down off of there for a minute? I got a couple of phone books I'll put here and we get you up where the folks can see you. Now uh -huh. I know who's going to ride that little horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Will you tell the panel, please, what your name is? What's your name, son? James Bradley Jr. James Bradley Jr. is a translation on that. Let's keep your hands down so we can see your big smile, okay? All right. And how old are you, James Bradley Jr.? Four. He's four years old. All right, now, James Bradley, Jr., if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Uh, panel, the clue to Junior Bradley's secret concerns something he does. And, Mari, let's start the game with you, my friend. Does he uh, have a musical talent of some kind? Do you have a musical talent? Mm -hmm. He says no, but I, I disagree with him. It's, uh, I say yes. Yes, yes, he does have a music. Is that, uh, does he play an instrument? Yes, he plays an instrument. Does he play uh, a harmonica? You play the harmonica? I play trombone. <laughs> he speaks. He speaks so softly. Did you, panel, did you hear him say what he plays? I was hoping you didn't hear. Uh, yes, Betsy. You know, I just said to Maury, yes. and I said, you know, one of these days, these children, when you say, what's my secret, are going to say right out loud what the secret is. <laughs> and sure enough, he did. He plays the drums, and he's proud of it, too. He, he is a professional drummer. Are you a member of the, of the junior? I mean, are you a member of the... Are you a member of the union, junior? You know, we thought he said trombone. We both did, yes. Oh, you oh, thought he said trombone? Yes. Well, I wish I'd asked you what he'd said. Drums <laughs> is what he said. You don't play trombone, do you? 
working on it. Well, he says he plays trombone, which is going to be a little strange because we got drums for him here. Uh, he also, he has played uh, an exhibition yeah. with such bands as Lionel Hampton, and he has been signed recently by a, to a television contract by station KTLA here in Hollywood. How long have you been working? Six. Well, how, 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 uh, how long have you been playing drums? How long have you been playing the drums? Six years. Six years? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been terribly uncomfortable for his mother. <laughs> He's been working professionally since last August. And how do you like the, how do you like drums? Do you like playing drums, Junior? Well, I won't hold you, you know, his, his parents told me before the show that when he was 17 months old, he used to take uh, uh, lead pencils and bang them on the side of his, on the, you know, slats in the crib. And they knew he had a beat right... <laughs> well, isn't that true? All right. Well, now let's get out here, son, and show these folks what you can do. There you go. Kids. Yeah, well, these are some of the big kids from our, from our own band. And our pianist tonight is Junior's mother, uh, Mrs. Uh, Robbie Bradley. Will you come out, please, Miss Bradley? Uh -huh. uh, Mrs. Bradley is a professional musician, as is the young man's father. Now, uh, we... <laughs> Enough, I haven't either, so we're going to come back for an encore, but we'll be back with you again right after this important message. Uh, friends, this is the time of year when the Red Cross is going to be calling on you to make a contribution. I don't think I have to stand here and tell you a whole lot about the Red Cross and the wonderful work that it does, so give as generously as possible. Also, tonight, I particularly want to thank Dick Van Dyke for coming in at the last moment, and uh, we want to send our very best to Miss Betty Davis, who was to have been with us. But like so many other people visiting New York this time of year, she came down with the Asian flu, and she did her best to get out here and make the show for us, but she couldn't, her doctor just wouldn't let her fly. Uh, but perhaps we can have her sometime in the future. But it was awful nice of Dick. And, uh, Mari? Yes, sir? I want to wish you luck on the... Uh, you're cutting a new album this week, right? Yeah, I called Through the Eyes of Mori Anthony. It's kind of a funny thing. Just buy it, folks, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and, Rosie, I want to thank you for all the joy you've given us since we've been out here, not only on this show, but your marvelous, marvelous job on the Tuesday night I show. I love doing it. Thank you. Save some more time for it. I will indeed. Henry and Betsy, I will see you back in New York. Yes. And uh, next week we are from, uh, uh, well, no, next week we are from the fabulous Harris Club in Lake Tahoe, and Carol Burnett is our special guest next week. And now let's get back to young uh, Mr. Bradley Jr. as he plays us off with Caravan. <laughs>
My name is Dick Van Dyke, and this is I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret. Brought to you tonight by Tony's products for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Now from Hollywood, California, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. Again, this week, we are happy to be originating from Hollywood, California, and so I would like you to meet our cast of thousands. First, the girl of a thousand charms, Betsy Palmer. Sitting in for Bill Cullen, here is a man of at least a thousand jokes, Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> and sitting in for Bess Meyerson is a girl of a thousand songs, Miss Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> and finally, a man who is one in a thousand, which is kind of sad because only last week he was one in a million. <laughs> well, are you all ready to play the game? Henry Morgan. Yes. All right, may we have our first contestant, please? Will you come in, sir? Good yes. evening. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Lutz Rui. I'm from California. Mr. Rui. Now, Mr. Rui, if you whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Step over here, let me whisper to you. <laughs> All right, now, panel, to help you classify this secret, the clue concerns something Mr. Rui has, and we'll start the game with Betsy Palmer, please. Mr. Rui, do you have this in your box? Yes. And Gary has another one in his box? Yes. No. You have something better than Mr. Rui in your box? Well, we won't compare them, but it's something different than something what he's different. got. Is it a lie? 